This is a remake of the histamine lecture, lecture 12 of pharmacology. <clears throat> I made too many mistakes in the first lecture, so I'm redoing it here. So, all right, first of all, we have the H1 receptors. These are found in the brain, smooth muscle, endothelium, okay? You also find that H2 is found in the brain, as well as H3 found in the brain. Okay, so all these are found in the brain. Okay, so H1, they bind, they use the GQ coupled receptors in the postsynaptic membrane. H1 and S2 are both postsynaptic. H3 is presynaptic, and I don't know about H4, I'm gonna assume it's probably pre as well. Both these are post. What does this do? <clears throat> H1 receptors, H1 receptors are going to increase IP3, okay? That's how they're gonna increase calcium, through IP3. Now, the next one here, H2, increases cyclic AMP, and then these last two decrease cyclic AMP. So increase IP3, increase CAMP, cyclic AMP, decrease cyclic AMP, decrease cyclic AMP. So <clears throat> there are, I put the green for the, the agonists and these for the antagonists, but actually I didn't list them all because I don't know if they're really going to be important, but you do need to know that ranitidine is an antagonist for H2. Again, ranitidine is an antagonist for H2, and we'll cover that later on in that section. But there's a bunch of different stuff here that they don't really use the agonists anymore because they apparently killed somebody. All right, these two, H1 and H2, are actually very different in their structure, okay? And they do very different things. However, H3 and H4 are 40% homologous in their proteins, okay? All right, so going on to H2 here. By the way, let me go back. H1, they have a lot of effects. I actually want to read off some of the effects that they have here because I think it's important. Um, H1 effects include bronchoconstriction, diarrhea, and constriction of in intestinal smooth muscles with big dose, local edema, hives, mediate respiratory neurons that's, that signal inspiration and expiration, associated with bug bites, redness from vascular smooth muscle, wheel from capillary endothelium, itching, itching from axonal, ax <laughs> axonal reflex. All right, so now for the H2. So H2, these ones are different. What these guys do is they're gonna actually, when, when they are bound with histamine, they are going to cause your, your gastric, goodness gracious. Anyway, it causes the secret parietal cells thing. Parietal cells secrete more acid, okay? So the stomach, cardiac, myocytes, mast cells, and brain have receptors for H2, okay? They use GS. These guys use GQ, these use GS, and these two both use GI, because they're very similar. So these are different from each other. They are also postsynaptic. What do they do? They increase cyclic AMP, and renit renitidine is gonna be the, the uh, antagonist there. So if these guys are going to cause more stomach secretion, you'd think you want to take these, uh, or excuse me, H2 blockers if you have too much acid in your stomach. Let me read off what they do here. Increased cyclic AMP attracts inflammatory cells, autoregulatory me mechanism, self limiting, except in the lungs, inhibit release of lysosomal contents, gastric parietal cells increase serotonin gastric acid via increased adenylocyclase. Okay, now for H3. These are found in the brain, myenteric plexi. GI, same as these guys, GI. Presynaptic. Decrease cyclic AMP. These two are 40% molecules of each other. If they haven't found any drugs yet that specifically target either of these bottom two ones. Okay, H4, eosinophils, neutrophils, GI, oh sorry, CD4 T cells, GI, maybe pre, also decrease cyclic AMP. They're associated with analgesia or pain. All right, now going down here to some of these drugs. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring this a little closer so I can actually read what it is that I'm talking about later on. 
Okay, so I did not actually list off all of the different, the full names on here. What I've done is I have um, just put the first little part of it so that you can kind of don't have to read it all. Okay, so there is something called doxy doxylamine, and I think it's sedative and it's for it's for treating nausea with pregnancy. And that is, I think, an H1, which I didn't have this on here, so doxylamine, I should probably write that on here, just to be complete. Doxylamine, I think it is sedative. Okay, so first of all, these H1 receptor blockers, first generation H1 receptor blockers. These, most of them have some sedative effect because they can pass the blood-brain barrier pretty easily. So first of all, I've got these four, okay? These four are all used as anti-emetics. In other words, they help you not be sick. They, they're good at preventing nausea, but they're not good at stopping once it started. Once the horse is out of the, the barn, uh, they were, he was saying it's, it's kind of too late. Okay, so Difen, Dimen, Prometh, and Mech. So the two dyes, the pro and the mech. And it's actually the full name is diphenhydramine and dimenhydronate and promethazine and meclazine. The nice thing about all these drugs is they all end in ene, I N E, which is nice because histamine ends in I N E. So that's pretty handy. So D D P M, di di P M, okay? All are anti emetic. Maybe you want to die at night in the PM, die, die, PM, at night because you are sick. I don't know, anti-emetic. <clears throat> okay, so, diphen, anesthesia, local anesthesia, also prometh is associated with anesthesia. So P and P for local anesthesia, these both have P's in them, okay? Maybe that'll, uh, pain, fen, P, pro, P, anesthesia, local anesthesia, pain. This first one, diphen, is actually also associated with Parkinson's disease. It's, it's, it acts as an antipsychotic. Also, prometh is also an alpha blocker. I don't know what that blocker is. So, there we go, blocker. Okay, so, and it's involved with orthostatic hypertension. So you think the pro, pro is number one, he's the alpha of this group of these anti-emetics. So he's alpha pro, he's alpha blocker. Now this the cipro and the chlor, whatever that is, chlormethazine. These two C's have to do with cold, okay? So CYP and chlor have to do with cold or cold medications. I think the cipro is a little bit more sedative than the chloral. Now we have the bromo and the hydroxy. And these are both just used for treating allergies. I think the hydroxy is actually very sedative, and the bromo is not very sedative at all. All these are very sedative. These are just not very sedative. This is kind of moderately sedative. Okay, running over here, we have second generation. Second generation means they do not pass the blood-brain barrier as easily. Okay, second generation H1 blockers or antihistamines. Okay, so we have cetirizine, terfenidine, fexofenidine, loratadine, and desloratadine. Well, something that's kind of nice about these is that these two guys, phenidine, phenidine, loratadine, loratadine, and lo and behold, they're pretty much the same thing. All this is, this has like hydroxy on it, and this has an oxo on it. So these are like pretty much these are the same things each other pretty much, just with one has an oxy, and these are pretty much the same things each other, just an oxy. And oddly enough, actually, this cet cetrazine is actually the same thing as was mentioned over here earlier, down here with this hydroxy. This drug is actually just the same structure as the hydroxy, except with an oxo, so it's an oxo hydroxy. This is the same thing as that one, so they're actually grouped together as well, same structure. Now, something you know about this is, well, all of these, by the way, are gonna be for allergies, but terfenidine has actually been kicked off the turf because it's 
with with drum because it had a big CYP three A four um, interaction. So Trafinity is kind of like sort of gone. It's been withdrawn because of that. And what else to know about those? Yeah, I don't know. There's really a ton else to know about them. I'm looking to make sure that I'm not missing anything, anything really important. I guess terfenidine inhibits P glycoprotein transporter in cancer cells, intestinal epithelium, and the blood brain barrier, but there's no clinical use for that yet. And it also caused torsades, tors, torsade points, which I think is basically where your EKG looks like this. Like all crazy, and then you die, or you almost die. So that's bad. And yeah. Okay, now moving on to this next. There's just three, and I want you to imagine this little story. Okay, the story is these three guys, uh, Sim and me, I spelled that wrong, Sim, Mim, me, to dine, sorry about that. Sim and me, and Ran and Fame. They're all gonna run a marathon, okay? Well, Sim and me is, is Mini Me's brother, and so he's a really tiny guy, and so he doesn't run very far. He runs a very short distance, and he gets mad, and he interferes with a lot of other people because he has a lot of CYP interactions, okay? So that's what you remember. Simimitidine has a short length, lots of CYP interactions, okay? So he didn't run very far. However, Renitidine, he ran longer. He ran longer. Renitidine ran longer. And oh, I didn't even see what these were, but I'll finish the story first. And Fame Otidine, he got the fame for winning the marathon because he ran the longest. And what are these guys? These guys are H2 antagonists, okay? So they are going to decrease your acidity in your stomach by binding the H2 receptors and preventing the parietal cells from releasing more acid. And that is all I've got for these.